This time on Gig Van Rig with Kath and Gareth. So what has happened is our windows and parts of our flue have turned up, so we'll come and take a look. So these are the windows that we've gone for. They are Shield Auto Care. And they are fragile. And it's 600 by 350 millimeters. And it says fragile. But unfortunately, as always, delivery drivers don't give it. So there's a big hole in it. But I did take it out earlier and it's fine. Nicely well packed. This is the, the inside frame. Ooh. I nearly went wrong. This is the inside frame, which has a fly net fly screen and also a blackout, blackout blind. And these windows are for walls that are. 22 to 35 millimeters thick. See, well packed. And this is the window. I hope they open further than that. Oh, and they do. Look at that. Brilliant. Nice aluminium surround. Surround. Feels like ceramic. Not, not ceramic, acrylic. It has four locks. One, two, three, and four. And little pistons to hold the window open. Looks pretty good to me. Got a window seal on the inside. And they were £185 each. We've got two windows, one for the back and one for the side of the kitchen. So uh, and they were an absolute bargain because we do worth it contemplating on getting some uh, double glazed windows. But they came out at double the price really for odd leg windows. So we'll put them back nice and safely in their boxes. Thank you to me. We were undecided whether to keep the old carpet in the cab or whether to buy a new one. So I thought I'd give it a little bit of a clean and see whether it comes up nice and then that will make our decision for us. Please like, subscribe and if you have any advice please leave it in the comments for us. Thank you. Especially if you know anything about putting in log burners because that's our next task. This is how Daisy looked last time you saw her. We had put up the vapour barrier and we've put ply on the lower half of the walls. We've installed the plywood around the walls on the lower section and now we're going to add the tongue groove to the upper section. So we're using 94mm wide, I think, 90, 90mm wide, 7.5mm thickness and uh, we're going to use the 2.4 meters because we've got less we've got just over one one meter from the ceiling to where we want the the end of this to go so where uh, 2.4 meters will give us two legs out of each one so we're going to cut these in pretty much in half and uh, stick them up on the walls and then we'll get the walls finished oh exciting catherine said my hair was a bit wild today so she decided to braid it i said you can't braid the bald patch Ching! This is going to be really cool stuff. This is really cool stuff. It's going to be really quick to get these walls completed. That's the theory. I spent two days doing this at the back. These things absolutely brilliant, and it's called a air nail gun. Right, nail gun. Fill these up with some nails. So we decided that it'd be a good idea to use Richard's rad nail gun or air nailer gun to put up the ply board on the ceiling and the walls. However. We selected these little dinky things, which I thought would be enough, long enough to go through and hold the plyboard up. Because 
That is quite, quite long in the big, big scheme of things. Ooh. So then, not much success because it appeared that it felt like the nails were going straight through. We thought this was down the pressure, but it wasn't that, it just wasn't enough to hold it. So the difference was, I said to Richard, what size nails do you use? And he said, that size. So pretty much double the size. And then as soon as we started using these ones, not a problem. But just, just remember that if you're using these ones, that the, the wood that you put them into, it's got to be long enough for these to not go through the outside of your van. So hopefully that was just fine. These are good. So don't do when you when you go when you go and do these, don't go small. Go big. Go big man. Double the size. Because it don't work. Unless you do. Are you saying size matters? Oh yes, baby. And pressure pushing it in. Ooh. Not too much pressure with these though, because they don't like it. So we cut our first piece and the first piece we needs to be squared, needs to be squared off. Otherwise we're gonna end up looking at dodgy, wonky pieces of wood. That's gonna be interesting because we're not sure how to square that off yet and where to square it off to because although it's kind of squarish, it's not kind of square. So we're gonna try and find out where it's gonna be. But basically, that's gonna go there, like that, into there, and then we're gonna use some sort of squaring tool to square it probably to this, we think. But, who knows? Never done squaring before. So we've got Richard's rather large framing square. I'm gonna try and keep it square with the plywood. And then, I think somewhere around there, be good. I think. See how much that's out? No. Is it out a lot? Gareth takes his time trying to square it up to the wall. You can tell that would be a problem. Wow. See how much that? There's a gap there. Gap where? At the back. Compared to the top. Yeah. Hola amigo. Hola. We nicked your framing square. Okay, so first measure the wall. First we're gonna measure the gap we're gonna fill with this tongue of groove. So, up to the top, to the bottom there, 103 centimetres. 103 centimetres it is. A nice fine pen. Carpenters would use pencils, but they were pen people. Take the old square. Sure, the line straight. And then, this is what I didn't think about earlier. And if you hold the end, you can't hold the end down, Phil. Okay. Cool. Just nice and flat, and then to make sure it's butted up correctly, take a piece of wood and a hammer and give it a little bit of a tap. Oh, you notice the top came out at the bottom. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? That does hit me. So, with the air nailer, with the air nail gun. I'm going to put one in just down here. Um, we have a piece of wood, we have a baton running across here. So I'm going to put another one here on the left hand side. On the left hand side of this piece of wood. And then another one at the top. Okay, not going to put one on the right hand side at the moment. Only because it's very difficult to get the next piece in if you if you nail down this side or screw this one down. 
But uh, yeah, hopefully this is all gonna end up being straight. Now this, the next one is in, I can now nail the previous one on the right hand side. And that's how it's going to go all the way along. One pack of tongue and grief has given us 10 eggs. So it's, um, yeah. So we've hopefully we've got enough to do this section and uh, probably best to use a calculator and calculate the width and everything before you start. But yeah, we did roughly. So we roughly thought we need one, two, three, six packs on it. We roughly thought we need six packs of 2.4 meters to do this side, that side, and the back wall. Up to the kitchen. Or door. Up to the door. And then we still haven't worked out what we're going to do in the front yet. First wall complete up to where we need to go for now. What do you think? What do you think? I like it. I cut out the hole for the vent in the plywood using one of these, which is a hole cutter. And that gave me insight into where roughly the corners were. I used the multi tool with a wood blade on it, and then I just went round, cut as much as I could possibly get it in, cut as much as I could possibly do without it up. Go really gently around the edges, and voila, we've got a hole. We're probably going to make a frame and also have some sliding door on it so we can close the whole hatch. Not only do we build awesome vans and trucks, we also side hustle a sand people. Richard is well known for his amazing van sprays, so we thought we would become part of Beyond the Van team. It took about a day to sand down this sprinter, ready for bodywork and then spray in. This one is going to be grey. Key enough a van. <laughs>